This is just a quick update on my basic build from 2021, to which I have been slowly adding parts and iterating upon. Earlier this year, I installed a GPU, a process I described in greater detail in a previous video. Today, however, I want to talk about a secondary M.2 storage drive that I installed. I wanted a new drive because I was quickly running out of space on my 512GB Samsung 980 boot drive. I was looking at either a SATA SSD or another M.2 storage drive in the secondary slot. In the end, I chose the latter because prices were roughly comparable per storage tier, and I wouldn't have to deal with more cables. I was comparing between the Intel 670p, the Western Digital SN570, another Samsung 980, and the Team MP33. In the end, I settled on the crucial P3 CT1000P3 SSD8 in the 1TB capacity, which looked interesting because the speeds were comparable to the Samsung 980 and the Western Digital SN570, but with prices closer to the Team MP33 when it was on sale. A not insignificant factor in my decision is that the P3 comes with an M.2 screw, which cannot be said of all NVMe drives. This saves me from having to fish out the motherboard box from storage. I got a 1TB part because of direct storage, which as far as I'm aware works with PCI3 drives. The speeds are obviously less than what you can get with more modern drives, but for my uses I will likely not notice any difference. In any event, my CPU only supports PCI3 speeds, so the choice was made for me. In any case, the second M.2 slot of my motherboard only supports PCI3 drives to my knowledge if the primary slot is already occupied. Installation was incredibly easy, and because my GPU is quite small, I was able to access the M.2 slot without having to remove the GPU. I would recommend doing so, however, as this made screwing in the drive require a lot of dexterity, and I nearly dropped the screw. The only reason I didn't remove the GPU is because my case is slightly wonky and off-center, so reinstalling the GPU would be a bit of a pain. Once I installed the drive, I powered up disk management and was able to configure the drive fairly quickly. I'm also looking to add a spinning disk hard drive for media storage in the future, but I'm weighing the pros and cons before I go rummaging around in my pile of boxes to find the hard drive cage that I removed. Incidentally, this is also perhaps the best time to be looking for DDR4 RAM, by which I mean this is a juncture at which DDR5 will become a requirement in new motherboards, and so the older generation will be phased out. That means lower prices for now, but also the likelihood that DDR4 will become expensive as it becomes more niche. If you plan to use your computer for a long time, and anticipate the need for additional RAM, this might be the best chance to grab a kit. Currently, I'm weighing the benefit of future proofing for a system I plan to keep for a long time, and the waste of getting new RAM when the one I have is perfectly sufficient for now. Plus, it was free. Also note on GPU prices. I knew well that I was taking a risk in accepting the EVGA Q offer so late in the current generation. Of course, little did I know then that crypto crisis would fall off a cliff as it has now. I'm not overly regretful though, as prices are still hovering around the amount I paid then, and there's still no indication that the 60-tier cards will arrive for the next generation anytime soon. I am anticipating price reduction for the 3060 Ti fairly soon, however, and will probably feel a bit of regret then. But at that point, it really will be the twilight of the Ampere generation, and so I can accept that outcome without too much annoyance with my impatience. So there we are. An additional one terabyte of storage for my computer. I will fill it wisely. <laughs>